Network here on this Monday. I'm Charles Edmund with Grace Head football coach Fred McNair at the Old Country Store. A lot to talk about. We're going to be talking with Mr. D coming up here the next hour. He's going to talk about being here and the, just the job that he's done. He'll probably sing to us too, Coach. I'm probably going to be a grandma. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he's going to give you something. <laughs> he's going to give you a note or two or three. Glad you could join us here on the Braves Sports Network as the Braves get set to take on USM Saturday at 6 o'clock. And it should be a lot of fun, a lot of anticipation. And Coach, football season is, what, five days away? We play at 6 o'clock, so now less than, officially, less than five days away. Exactly right, Charles. It's less than five, man. So we're excited about it. We're excited about the season. You know, you, you, you look at just trying to defend what you earn, and you continue to be the hunted. Talk about how the team has handled the success here especially in, in camp during the summer. Got their championship rings yesterday, and, and now we're ready for another season. Got out the way, Charles. Uh, you know, the kids were excited, and that's one thing that we wanted to do uh, <clears throat> prior to, you know, playing this season was uh, get that out the way, and I thought that, you know, the administration and the staff did a great job of, of getting the work done they needed to do to get those uh, 40 young men that they really deserved it, uh, Charles. And, uh, you know, just to say about the, the season, last season, uh, and like I told them, you know, uh, when you win, it's a price you got to pay when you win. And uh, and when, you, when you're winning, you are the hunted. And so that's what we are now. So the kids that really accept that role, and, um, and like I tell them, you know, with no distractions, I'm uh, looking forward to a great season this year. So that's one of the things that, as coaches, we emphasize a lot uh, during the off season, uh, up, up until the camp time. Uh, expectations are very high. So. Um, They'll accept that challenge. And the biggest thing about coming to camp, Charles, the kid was excited. They were excited about camp. And uh, that's one thing that I looked at them when they came into camp, uh, how excited it was to be back here on our June 26th for, for summer school. And uh, I can't say enough about how they came in ready to play. Some of them body changed, and you can see they did some work across the summer. So uh, that's one thing we always anticipate, uh, seeing the young men when they come in after a summer vacation is how they body changed uh, during the course of that month and a half that they was off. So, soon a lot of good bodies come in and some wasn't so pleasing. Uh, but through the process of summer school, Coach Maddox did an outstanding job of getting those guys uh, back in shape uh, to get in shape for campus. So, uh, the expectations of, of this staff is very high and we put a lot into these young men and getting them to believe in themselves first, Charles. It's a big process of what we do um, for this program. There's a price to pay when you lose, of course. Talk about paying the price when you had the type of success that we had. Well, the biggest thing is, Charles, you know, um, you know, through the course of the year last year, you you win and you win your fifth uh, East Division title. Uh, you plan for a select championship and you're planning the celebration bowl. I think the biggest thing is when you talk about the price you have to pay for winning is that Everybody now expects you to win, um, which of course is that's our expectation, is to continue to win and to continue to mold the young men into a winning program on and off the field. And I think that as a coaching staff, we pretty much established the mold of what we're trying to get the young men to do when they come in as freshmen. Um, you know, from then on, you know, it's just the matter of just shaking them up uh, to what we need them to be shaped up into, uh, into champions. Um, uh, at the same time. So um, we expect to, to do good things and, uh, you know, our fan base, of course, you know, they expect us to do great things too. So expectations are high and, and we're willing to, you know, we're willing to work for it. So that's the thing that we, our goal was set for. Talk about the grind of camp. I mean, because I was at, at practice a few days here and there and there were some, some days in which, you know, you hit the wall. There are some days that were pretty good. Overall, talk about how your team handled camp. You know, the pretty big thing, Charles, is how they came in. Like I said, when they came in, they were excited about it. You know, they didn't come in dreading camp or nothing like that. You know, camp now, you're only once a week, once a day. Uh, it's not no tour days no more. So you get a chance to come out and work for at least two and a half hours a day and just grind and grind football. Uh, you meet the time, you set aside. and, and uh, But they handled camp really well, Charles. You know, the weather was great. Um, we got a chance to do something a little bit different uh, with school store. We got a chance to 
to set aside our schedule time for morning practice now. So uh, we lost a lot of kids in the afternoon uh, for practice during the class and stuff like that. Now these kids don't miss no practice time and they're still able to do their classwork at the same time. So uh, we have developed a, a real good relationship with our compliance with uh, Russ Cyrus and, um, and Javonna Smith did an outstanding job of, of putting this thing together where we can do um, practice in the morning time and have that, that morning hour blocked off so our kids won't miss class in the afternoon and all that kind of stuff. So it's been very intriguing uh, the way we handle it and where we approach the whole situation. Uh, it's a process, Charles. You know, everything is a process and, and the way you handle things and, and the way you go about business. Uh, you know, everybody got to be on board. So I think that compliance, they was on board and of course the, the young men's coming in for camp, they were well on board. So the coaching staff was, was here and putting it all together and, and here we are, this is where we at now. You know, we talked about it on the last show and a lot of people might not know that, you know, the two, it was two a days and two every, two practices every other day, but all that has disappeared in terms of the amount of hours that you have to put in leading into the opening game of the season. Did that cause a little angst knowing that you don't have as much time, as many hours, you have to also deal with the heat index. If the heat index is at a certain temperature, you can't really go out there and practice, you have to reduce that. Does, does that give you some angst knowing that you don't have as much time, but you got to get a lot of work with? You know, the biggest thing for us in camp every year, we have to deal with the climate. You know, Mother Nature was really good to us this year. Um, come in and, and had great weather, um, and I hope we continue to bless us with this kind of weather, you know, where the kids could be um, well cooled off and and not so hot to where we can't practice. Uh, we did have one practice or two that we had to take our pads off because the heat index was, was too high. But uh, overall, uh, throughout the whole camp and summer school process, I thought that um, the weather was good for us to come out and practice and, and do the things we need to get done to, uh, to make this the season uh, much better and easy transition uh, to what we get done through the course of the camp. Ten minutes after six o'clock, we're going to take a break here. And when we come back, we'll look at offense, defense, special teams. We'll start with the offense. We'll get to that coming up. Questions from the audience. I see some cards being filled out for those who are just arriving. We appreciate you coming in and supporting us here at the Old Country Store. On uh, every one of your tables, there's an index card and a pen. If you have a question for Coach. Manuel Barnes is working the working the microphone, working the room, and we'll get to some of those questions coming up. So we'll take a one minute break here. Ten minutes after six o'clock here in Lorman at the old country store. We're gonna hear from Mr. D coming up here on the program as well. He'll talk to us about what it's meant for him to be a part of All Point State University and All Point State Athletics. We'll start with the offense. We'll give you the projected starters coming up after this one minute timeout here on the great year. I've got my two deep, I've got my bracket and chart all ready to go for Saturday. And, and you look at this team and it starts with Noah Johnson. Talk about the biggest improvement from Noah Johnson from last year to what you see right now. You know, the biggest thing is with Noah, you know, Noah, he wants to do everything right. You know, if you if get it wrong in practice, you want to redo it and, until he get it right. I think his leadership has really grown this past year. He's matured a whole lot uh, after last season, just coming in and and he's one of the guys that, that came in uh, more with a chip on his shoulder because he came in in shape. Uh, his body had changed and, and the way he came in with a good attitude to, to want to work and, and work toward the ultimate goal. Uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you go back and look at that, that uh, the championship game and the, uh, the celebration bowl, he was kind of upset uh, because we lost the ball game. And true enough, he's supposed to be. And, um, but you know, he came in and, and he wanted to get back there. So. He's been working hard uh, throughout this whole camp, and, and uh, he's one of our predominant leaders uh, on the offensive side of the ball. Backing him up, man, you talk with people, I want to get your thoughts on this. Who is the backup quarterback if we get ready for USF? Well, right now, uh, Pat, you know, he, he's controlling that, and, and we're still watching right now, and I think that that was probably by Wednesday we would know who will be his backup. I think Felix Harper has really improved in this game. Uh, Jaron Russell has really stepped up um, as a redshirt sophomore this year. So uh, even that is Peyton. You know, those guys have really come along uh, pretty good, uh, Charles, to compete for that number two job. But uh, by Wednesday, 
we'll probably do that number two guy is. So just talk about how each one of them has kind of made their mark in trying to get that number two job. The assumption, a lot of people assume is Felix Harper. You talk about what he did in the championship game, maybe the biggest play of that game on a third and four as Noah Johnson's helmet pops off. He has to come out of the game for a play. And Felix Harper gets on that first down. The biggest thing is about that position, Charles, and about any position on the football field is that you got to be ready to play. Uh, any down, it could be the last down for the starter, you know, but I think figure what he did, what he shown during that championship game that he was far behind everything. So he did an outstanding job with that, but he's grown. He's grown up a little bit. So we're looking forward to to seeing Wednesday who's going to be that guy. So when we talk on the pregame show, we'll know who the backup's going to be. We talk about Peyton Russell, Felix Harper, the number two. All right, in the backfield, is there any doubt? Deshaun Waller. Talk about the improvement that he's made. Everyone's keying on two guys on offense. You read, <laughs> you read the articles. It's Noah Johnson and Deshaun Waller. Well, you know you got Deshaun Waller, and he's a he's a much improved guy this season, Charles. You know, coming in last year, backing up PJ Simmons, uh, I thought he did an excellent job, and even missing three ball games, he's still over a thousand yard rushing. So, uh, look for more out of him this year. Um, he's gonna come out of his shell a little bit, and now he's. He's uh, becoming himself, and uh, that's the thing that we look for when we talk about football players, how they develop from one year to the next. And, and I think this year you'll see a whole lot better uh, running back in the water than Deshaun Wallace. And to just talk about Marquise Foreman. Will he be his backup? Well, that's the thing, running back by committee now, Charles. You talk about those guys, and you have a staple of those guys back there. It's uh, Jonathan Bolton. He's a great runner, you know, and uh, those guys are going to be competing, Charles. And, and you're going to see them at some time uh, during the course of the game. So in the backfield, you talk about Waller, you talk about uh, Foreman, you talk about Bolton. Talk a little bit about Trey Turner. Turner's a big back, Charles. He, he's a big back, and he's one of those backs you want to bring in. And uh, when, you, when, you, when you got the game won and you're ahead and you want to come in and bruise somebody up a little bit, that's the guy you want. Because he's going to run downhill. He ain't going to fall for no negative yards. He always going to fall forward. So... That's the kind of back you want in the backfield in those kind of situations. One of the guys that's been talked about in camp, Nico Duffy, the freshman from Atlanta. Talk a little bit about him and where he fits into this. Much improved back. He came in, he was, he first came in for a visit, I think he was like 140. Uh, came in for camp, he was like 162. So he done gained a little weight now, Charles. And, and uh, he's coming to an age and, and you're gonna see some playing time as well. So those guys have been doing a great job of, Alternate in and out. And, uh, Rodarius Anderson, Chris Blair, Juan Anthony. Talk about those. They're kind of a three-headed monster, isn't it? Yeah, those some uh, those some proven receivers there, Charles. You're talking about Rodarius Anderson. Actually, he missed the Celebration Bowl after about one series uh, uh, with a concussion, but he's back now uh, doing the things he normally do. Um, Juan Anthony, slot receiver, good speed, go catch the ball, sure-handed guy, uh, uh, CB. Uh, Chris Blair doing an outstanding job inside, and we can move him outside as well as inside too. So those are things, though, guys. We got things we can put him at. So uh, we're going to utilize very well this year. So behind those three, Coach, talk a little bit about who has stepped up and who you expect. I, I see six on the uh, depth chart as far as receivers are concerned. Of course, Tim McNair, Chris Green, and Akeem Warren. Talk a little bit about those three. Well, those guys have really have stepped up too, especially on uh, Tim McNair. He's, He's done a tremendous job, and, and the Charles Pringle, you know, he's a multi-position uh, guy, too, as well. Move those guys in and out. Uh, but those guys have been doing really good throughout this whole process, throughout this whole camp. So we're looking for some good things out of those guys this upcoming season. You talk about the family connection, Coach. I mean, we, we all, of course, your late brother Steve, Tim. I mean, the pressure, do you, do you, how do you deal with that knowing you yeah, have a – you have a, a relative of yours playing, you know, wearing that purple and gold, trying to prove himself, maybe a little nervous, trying to, to get in there. You know, the, the, the thing I always tell those guys, even even the, even the guys that's there, you know, I said, you know, biggest thing is do your own thing. You don't worry about no pressure. Just play your own kind of football. You know, come out, take coaching, and um, and just and be yourself. You know, I don't ask anything other than what they can do. You know. Um, 
that's just the way we've been, that's the way we approach it as coaches. You know, we don't ask anything out of the young man that we haven't done before. You know, so they've been doing a good job of, of managing that situation. But, uh, of course, pressure-wise, I mean, it's, it's always going to be pressure whether you whether you have a relationship with them or not. You know, there's always pressure on Talk a little bit about the tight ends, Coach, because in our offense, the tight end, third and four, fourth and two, need the hard yards. Of course, we can run the football, but getting the tight end involved, who are some of the tight ends that we'll be looking at? You know, the biggest thing is I think those all those guys are doing a great job throughout the whole camp. Uh, uh, Everett, Keontae Everett, and uh, Nigel Wood, and Jeremiah Green. And those guys are really, really stepped up a little bit during the course of camp. Uh, from last year. Some of the guys that played last year, they looking for bigger, better things out of them this year, Charles. And uh, you know, especially out of Nigel Wood. Nigel Wood is a guy that you can split out wide and with good speed and great hands as well. So um, some of those guys like that, we can put in different position and, and make it work. Yeah, Nigel Wood last year we had some pretty big catches in clutch situations. Yes, he did. And uh, we're looking for those big catches this year too, Charles. So uh, we expect that out of him. All right, so let's talk about up front. Veteran presence up front with Bubba Brooks, Ajimobi, Davis, Ibrahim, and Kevin Hall. That's about as veteran as it gets up front. All those are seasoned guys, Charles. They, they've been they've been salt and peppered and everything. They they read it. Yeah. So uh, those guys there, man, they, they, have, they have done an outstanding job throughout the whole career they've been here. All those guys was probably freshman starting. So then this, this is the fifth year, fourth year playing together um, on that offensive line with Mustafa uh, holding down in the center spot, Darius Davis at the right guard, and Kevin Hall, of course, the right tackle. Uh, got got Tate Brooks back this year, and that's a plus for us uh, with the other guy that's coming in too as well. Ajimobi, you know, um, he's come back in as a left tackle, so um, he's been looking good throughout this whole camp. How many offensive linemen do we have? Right now, Charles, we're probably at 20. And that's the most we had since I've been here. 20 offensive linemen. So how many will how many will travel? Well, Charles, I'm on, I told the coaches this year, we're going to travel as many as we need to uh, because we know it's going to get hot. And all those guys are able to give each other some spill and time, give them some rest. So um, we're going we're gonna to travel probably about 15. So we're going to have enough, you know, Charlie. We're not going to get down there and get windy. Uh, we should be in shape by this time anyway. So uh, the kids have been running well, and they haven't shown any sign of fatigue uh, these last couple of weeks. So we're going to get them in shape, Charlie. It's just amazing. We, you said 15 old linemen. I remember a few years ago when we played Arkansas, we had five. Exactly right, Charlie. We played with five five starters. And they played maybe the whole game. Maybe have one guy <laughs> sub in. And, and, and they did a good job, Charles. We wrestled like almost 200 yards against Arkansas. With just five, maybe six old linemen. All right, so that's the look at the offense. We're going to get to some of the questions here when we come back. We'll look at the defensive side of the ball. And Cedric Thornton is loaded for bear on that side. We'll look at front, the middle, and on the back end. We'll get to some of the text. You can text us at 601-348-7254. You can tweet a question. I'm on Twitter, Tall Man Radio. So we'll get to some of that. We have some questions from the audience. Emmanuel Barnes, we'll get to that. Coming up after this one-minute timeout, it's 23 minutes after 6 o'clock. All four Braves football and the Golden Eagles of USM at 6 o'clock will be on the air at 5.30. We'll take a one-minute break as the Fred McNair radio show rolls on from the old country store here in Lorman. Some good cooking, to say the least. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. All right, we have our question from uh, Andre. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, Coach Andre Young from Natchez. Uh, I know everybody runs some form of a spread offense now, but who does USM's offensive coordinator's offense compare to some change we play? Well, pretty much what we've been getting right now, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Andre, is the uh, offensive coordinator from Arkansas State. Uh, he actually, he didn't really call the offense when he was there, uh, but they run some of the similar stuff that, that we're running. Uh, uh, what, we, what, what we see, I think they see in practice, it's probably with some of the stuff that we're going to get in Southern Miss. Um, he come from an air raid offense when he was at Middle Tennessee State. He air raided out with the Middle Tennessee State or uh, uh, Faulkner. Uh, so looking for more type thing, but, you know, we just got to be prepared for whatever they shoot at us. Uh, our offense give Coach Thornton whatever he needs in the course of practice to see 
uh, something similar to what they're going to show us down in Habsburg. Coach, Eugene Wynn, uh, Fayette. My question is, we have a good recruiting year. Will any incoming freshman be able to work that way into the rotation this, this year? Yeah, uh, we got some of the receivers doing pretty good right now uh, to can work their stuff into it uh, this year. Some young guys. Uh, we have some uh, some transfers from JUCO that's going to probably end up playing a little bit this year as well, especially on the defense side of the ball. Um, offensively, you know, we've got some young guys. That's, uh, the Nico Duffy kid, you know, he's a he's a slasher runner. So uh, we got Chris Green and you got McKissick, Isaiah McKissick, receiver. So they're going to see some out time today. Uh, well, Saturday, uh, during, the, during the game. Okay, uh, I think you already actually answered one of my questions. One of the questions was, what do the receivers look like this year? i tell you what, they, that's a, that's a, that's a fine group of young men out there, man. Uh, we got, uh, we got probably five guys over six, three or better. Uh, they're gonna be tall in the statue. They got great hands. They sure they got great hands, and uh, they're doing a whole lot of improvement, stop blocking, uh, for the running backs, and uh, what they do. So, uh, hopefully, you know we'll see it on Saturday. That uh, practice look good. So, hopefully, we'll be able to showcase that same talent uh, coming up on Saturday. All right, we appreciate the questions. We'll check back in with our studio audience. We apologize for that. Take that was on me, coach. That, that, was, that, was, Sorry, that, that was that was that was my bad. Sorry. All right, so let, let's let's look at the defense. Speaking of bad, defense was bad in a good way <laughs> last year. So you know, let's let's talk a little bit about it because uh, before we get into the individual, I got the depth chart here a little bit. One of the questions I was asked all summer long, and just you, you hear stuff in the wind, you know, about some of our some transfers from. FBS programs, a lot of them on the defensive side of the ball. I talked with Coach Thornton a couple of weeks ago trying to work those guys in. So here we are five days away from kicking the season off. What's the status of those individuals? Well, they were, it's always a work in progress, Charles. And, and you know, I think we've been working very well with the administration and, and the staff uh, to get these guys to where they can, can participate. So when we really got one of the guys in, uh, today, so he'll be able to come. Hopefully, start practice on tomorrow. What's his name? Uh, that's uh, Christopher Hart, um, and hopefully, uh, the next guy will will be waiting in the wings uh, uh, for us real soon. So Christopher Hart transfer from that's Utah. Utah transfer. Okay, talk about what he brings to the table. If you look at his skill set. Well, you know, Coach Hart does a really good job trying to recruit this kid here and you know, playing defense at the end for us. Uh, this kid can play, and uh, we're excited about having him here, Charles. And uh, you know, I always tell the coach when we, when we recruit him, we want the best talent here, and the kids that want to be here. And I think this kid want to be here because this kid drove through the night to get here. So uh, we're excited about seeing him here today. You, know, you, you talk about, the, you read about the transfer portal. Oh, uh, you know, kids going all over the place. Have you seen a year in which you? heard about or read about just so many transfers, kids going from one place to the next. You know, once this thing opened up a little bit where you can pretty much, you know, go wherever, do you see, talk about how you see that going forward and how it's helped this program. Well, you know, the biggest thing here, Charles, you know, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing uh, to get transfers in, but also can work kind of against you too, uh, as far as the, the educational side of, it, of the APR and all that kind of stuff because a lot of transfers come in and they just come in just to play football and not to get their education as well. So they think they have one year to, to get it done and, and then they out of here, you know. So they, they looking forward to get this drafted and all that kind of stuff. But, but we always encourage the young men that, that want to transfer here. You're here to get an education first and you're going, your football side of it is going to be done, you know, with your, with your ability. But uh, a lot of time that can be a, a good thing and be a bad thing. And you don't want to just spill your spill your whole table full of transfers either. And that can really that can really uh, be detrimental to you. And back in the day when you kept hearing about transfers, you, you heard the word quick fix, short term fix. Is that still the case today with the way the rules are set up? That's what it is, Charlie. You can get all the transfers that you want, uh, uh, but if they don't do that work after one year, I mean it's pretty much done. 
Uh, now you're going to have APR issues, and, and now you're going to go into some sanctions. So uh, I think our compliance uh, worked very good with us and making sure we had compliance of, with the transfer report and, and what we need to get what we need to bring in, too, as well. We all want to identify the kid that want to be here uh, at the same time, too. So I think the kids that we got here, those kids want to be here, and I think that they, they, they we trust them to make sure they do their work. All right, so let's look at the defense, Coach. Let's start up front. You look at Bonds, you look at Daryl Henderson. Talk a little bit about the guys up front that you expect to start on Saturday. I tell you what, I'm very, very much pleased. I think Coach Gordon said the same thing, too. And I just asked a while ago, you know, just overall on the defense side of the ball, who would be the standout guy throughout this whole camp-wise? And, and he mentioned Daryl Henderson. He's been working his butt off, John. Um, day in and day out, you know, the last year, the old Daryl is no more existing. Uh, Daryl come in with a good attitude, come in in good shape, and uh, and ready to work, and had took no time off. You know, come out there a little one day and got up and right back at it. So uh, he's he's been the standout guy throughout this whole process. You know, Bonds is gonna be great for us too. Uh, you know, up front, uh, Chris Monroe and those guys that nature. You know, we're just trying to develop depth behind those guys so they can take a breather every once in a while uh, when they need it. All right, so let's look at the middle part of the line, the linebackers, Solomon Muhammad. Anytime you mention his name, you talk about NFL talent. What's what's the next step in his process to get there? Just a, just a thing that Coach Thornton always tell him, you know, you, you really have to study the game, you know. He, he played the game very fast. I mean, he played the game tremendously fast. And that's the thing that, that Coach Thornton always talked to him about, just slowing it down, studying the game, understand what you're doing, and, and those kind of things. That, but you're talking about a pretty athlete. That's probably one of the prettiest linebackers I've seen in a while, Charles. And uh, he got the athletic system to play on the next level. Uh, but he kind of makes sure that he's doing everything right to help himself as well. So on the bookends of that, talk about who will play opposite of Solomon Muhammad in the middle. Well, you got uh, Webbs and you got uh, Mikhail Harrell. And uh, those guys, those guys will turn your lights out, Charles. You know, they're, they're guys are, those guys light you up. And I've seen them practice, and uh, they chase the ball well, they pursue well. And that's one thing that Coach Thornton really do with these guys a whole lot every day is a pursuit to real. They run to the ball, and uh, you'll see a whole lot of that Saturday. Them, it ain't going to be just one, it ain't going to be just two. It's probably going to be all level of them trying to get to that football. And so when, when that happens, something will happen with that ball on the offensive side of the ball. And now on the back end, you've got the veteran presence of Bruce and Morrison, and then Cole and Kinsler. Talk about them. Those guys have been good uh, throughout the whole camp as well, Charles. I mean, it's, it's all about attitude. Uh, attitude and effort. You know, when we get after stretch, we get up, and I always talk to them about attitude and effort during the whole day. And I think throughout the whole process, Charles, and those guys on that back end, they got to be ready to play, take a lot of pressure off those guys up front. You know, and I think that they up for the challenge. I think they're gonna do some good things in that back end. With Terry Cole, with the safety, and him and Kinsler, they gonna patrol back there in the back. And uh, on the corner, we got Bruce and Morrison, and they'll, they'll anchor the corner down for us. So we'll talk about on the defensive side, maybe on the offensive side, who are some of the guys that just kind of came out of nowhere, that you just, you were kind of wondering where they gonna be able to get over that hump, and they did. Well, you know, the biggest thing was, I think probably be, Alan Bruce, uh, you know, he's been here for a while and now he's worked his way up in that starting role. You know, you had uh, Dalen Burch starting at that corner, but now you you have Alan Bruce starting at that corner, you know, putting up pressure on the guys. And, and that's a big step for, for Bruce to become in that position to play. And uh, I think that Coach Freddie has done a good job with those guys in the corners, uh, as well as uh, Coach Cash with the Saints. And, you know, we got more depth there, I think, at the corner spot than we have anywhere else. What about on the offensive side of the ball? What are some of the guys that, again, you didn't know what last year? Speedy back. So we'll see a lot of him uh, returning kicks and all. So we're very excited about Nico. We want to take a break right here, folks. When we come back at 38 minutes after, we'll get into special teams. Who's going to return punts and kickoffs? We'll talk about that. We'll take some questions. We got some tweets. And we'll hear from Mr. D coming up, and also we'll talk about USM. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be right back after this timeout here from the Old Country Store on the Fred Big Man Radio Show. <laughs> we 
they have uh, Bo Barney right there. I don't hear him. Man. There it is. <laughs> He's ready to rock and roll. We appreciate the questions that have uh, come in. Let's get uh, to some of the tweets, Coach. TJ Warren tweets, what is the status of Ringland Hollis and Bonds going into week one? And uh, notice that uh, they missed some of fall camp. Well, uh, I think Bremen is questionable right now going into week one, but Ron Ball is ready to work with us today, so we're excited about seeing him out there today at practice. So uh, probably be a game time decision for him. Uh, the wrong bones, but we haven't made that decision on him yet. I think Jaleesa has done an outstanding job of getting old guys back to where he at right now. All right, so let's look at special teams because we know McCullough, we know what he has done. We know what he can do. And I know the last couple of years, you've been talking about getting some other legs involved in this process of PATs, kickoffs, hunts. Is that the case here in 2019? Well, yes, and some some of the Eastern charge, but I think Corey came in with a stronger leg and and he's booting that ball so far right now. And it's out of sight, so uh, he's done a great job throughout the whole camp and just not overdoing himself. Um, just being consistent, his punt and his kickoff. Um, but he's probably going to be the guy for us right now. Uh, he's going to take care of all the dudes right now until we got a freshman in and our Greg Blue. He's coming along pretty good, so uh, I think Corey's kind of molded him to where he needs to be. So Corey McCullough, as we start the season, will do all the kicking duties. Right now, we're going to stick with Corey right now. All right, so let's talk about punt and kickoff returns. Who you got in those slots? Well, right now, Jawan Anthony and uh, Jabba Morris will probably be on my return guys on kickoff returns. So uh, with that, this will be Coach Duffy. And um, Wilder, if needed, uh, play a save with him. Uh, he'll be out bell kind of this year, so I can't really afford to get him hurt on the kickoff. So, uh, unless it really came down to what we didn't have anybody else. You know, one of our Achilles heel, and it was the difference in the celebration bowl, unfortunately, was kickoff return coverage. You know, it gave up a kickoff return in the third quarter, that celebration bowl, and we played our tails off, and that was the difference in the game. And towards the end of last season, we, we sprung a leak on kickoff coverage and punt. Coverage. Talk about how you've been able to work on that in your camp and trying to shore that up. Well, the biggest thing is, uh, uh, Charles, when, when, you, when, you, when you're doing kickoff and you're on the sideline and you expect that group to be in, and uh, I had a talk with a young man that, that took himself out of the ball game uh, in that sense uh, where he shouldn't have uh, because he was better than the guy that replaced him uh, anyway. Uh, hurt. So, we can't afford to do that. We can't afford to make those kind of mistakes. And, and just after talking to him, he understand that now. So uh, let somebody know what you're doing, at least the special team coordinator, uh, in that sense of what you're going to do as far as coming out of the ball game. Because we always tell him, let somebody know before you come out of the ball game. And in that case, he did. And uh, right where he needs to be, that's where the guy returned the kick. And we've been doing a kick the whole game. Same kick. So. Um, one of our guys missed him, he should have dove and tackled him. It just didn't happen, so uh, we bucked on that one, Tom. And that's just one of the three phases of the game. It's offense, defense, you can score a ton of points, you can give up a little bit, but then if you spring a leak on special teams, you can make a difference. And you got to be solid on all, all phases of it, Tom. That's one of them that you have to be really solid on. And I think that Coach Powell has done a great job of, of getting us where you need to be right now and preparing for Southern Miss and what they're going to do with special teams. All right, so we'll take a break here. You got you got the information in terms of who punt and kickoff return coverage, punt and kickoff return. You've got Juan Anthony Morrison, and as uh, Fred Bigger mentioned, Corey McCullough going into the season will do all of the kicking duties on the offensive side. Who will be the backup quarterback? That will be determined in the next 48 hours. Pretty solid defensively. And the Braves are ready to roll. We'll take a break here. Questions from the audience. We've got some tweets coming in. We'll get to that text as well. We'll get to all that coming up. We'll hear from Mr. D coming up, the owner here of the Old Country Store. Just get his thoughts about being a part of this. He was here a couple of weeks ago just scouting the joint, as they say. Yeah. And here we are. So we appreciate him. Let's give him a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? We'll get to that as well. And a bunch of text to come in. We'll get to that because somebody say it's the Hobson game. I don't know where that came from, but nonetheless, we'll talk about USM 
as well. Back after this one minute time out here on the Fred McNair Radio Show, live from the old country store, back at 60 seconds. Minutes away from the beautiful Alcorn campus. I'm going to be talking with Mr. D coming up, Charles Edmond with Braithead football coach Fred McNair, a special live edition of the Fred McNair Radio Show from the old country store producer, uh, Jamario Brooks. Uh, coach a tweet has come in about any new late signees to announce. No, not this time, Charles. I think that, that everybody is, is, is here that we need and, and we get ready to ride out. <laughs> so talk, just talk about this part of the, the, the deal. I mean, you, you had a top player in camp and now you kind of narrow things down. How, how tough is this part knowing that you had a bunch of bodies to start and now you've got into your mold of who you, who you got? Well, we, we still have a bunch of bodies, Charles. We're going to probably have probably about 15 more added. Um, probably on, on Thursday, we have a walk on trial on Thursday uh, for some newcomers that want to come and be a part of, of uh, this great program. Uh, but right now, what we're doing now is is kind of narrowing it down to where, uh, where we're going to travel, uh, kind of get our 63-man roster down for the conference and, and those kind of kind of things. And this is a chance to work, you get a chance to see some of the young players now playing these non-conference games and kind of develop uh, the depth of who you can play uh, during, during the conference play. You, you were saying one day in, in camp that, you know, USM going to dress out over 100. They probably will, Charles. I mean, it's going to be on that turf, and the humidity is probably going to be steaming pretty good. Uh, but, yeah, but I think our guys in shape, Charles. And I think our guys in shape, shape for that kind of play. So um, we'll be ready for it. Uh, a Texas come in. Has Chris Hart and Kendra Daniel made the team, and what role will they play if, if they've made that group? Well, um, Chris is here now, and uh, we're still waiting on uh, – uh, Daniels uh, to get approved and everything, so we, we're still in the process of doing that. So hopefully we we'll get that done here today. All right, we have a question from the audience. You team wins, and question: I have field goal kicker. What 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 is the average consistent range that he can kick consistently? Well, uh, I went live on him uh, uh, other day in practice. Uh, he won about fifty. Well, actually, about sixty-two. Uh, so we ain't work from 49 in. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much comfortable with it from 49 in. Uh, if, if, if it's a sudden death field where we have to have a long field goal, I won't be afraid to, to try it. There you go. You, you think Hop's going to be up in that chicane where he's famous for? <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. <laughs> We're going to talk about USM uh, coming up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the other microphone, we have the owner of the Old Country Store. Let's give a round of applause to Mr. D. Yeah, I have this event here. You know, I came in for the weekend and I didn't even tend to stay. But my business has been now 22 years. And if you ain't ready for this 2019 season, you better get your uniform on, okay? Because it's on. Yeah. Like popcorn, fried yeah. chicken. Oh. <laughs> I'm see Mr. D. Barn, let's get Mr. D. Because I want to, you know, Mr. D, you and I go way back. And, uh, you know, your support for Alcorn State University and Alcorn Athletics. Just, just talk a little bit about that. Because teams eat here during the break. Football team eats here. Basketball learns during the breaks. Just, just talk about your connection and how that has been molded into the You know, wanting to be a part. You know, like, I'm from Florida, and I came to Mississippi. And it's amazing being here in Mississippi. I call Mississippi my home. You know, all kinds of states, you know, it's funny about Lauren, and you can go anywhere from Lauren. You know, I've seen this go on the ESPN and CBS. And not long ago, I was on Wall Street from Lauren. And I've seen our coaches go as head coaches other places. And last year, our president went to be over all the universities. From Longman, you can go anywhere. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm a living witness. And big things are happening in Longman, so you've got to come and be a part of it. We are not afraid. We're not ashamed. Um, we're going to have a lot of names and brains. 
Overtime targeting wine side blocks. I know you've had a couple of scrimmages. The officials have been at these scrimmages. What are some of the points of emphasis for 2019? I guess the biggest thing, Charles, was the, the blind side block and the targeting rules uh, that now is in effect now. It was in effect last year, but now on targeting, uh, there's no go, it's not going to be no in between deal where it stands. It's going to be this confirmed or they're going to overturn it back. Uh, and after three targeting rules, the whole season, three targeting on one player can be a suspension for a game. And uh, those are the biggest challenges that we have to, uh, to be mindful of. And I let the defensive coaches uh, show the film to uh, the defense side of the ball uh, on, uh, on last week to let them know where, where the targeting rules stand. And also the blind side rules, especially on no return, that if it's an interception, our defense is blocking. Uh, for our players and just have this blindside somebody, that will be a flag as well. So there's been a couple of rule changes and, uh, you know, we have to buy by them and we have to just coach our kids up to to know what's right and what's wrong on those, on those blocks and those targeting rules. And also there's been a change in overtime. Remember last year, Texas A&M and LSU played a seven overtime game. So there's been some tweaks in the overtime period, uh, starting with the fifth overtime if it goes that far. Uh, starting with overtime number five, standard overtime rules will apply to the first four overtime periods, including mandatory two-point conversions after touchdowns in the third and fourth frames. Teams will get one shot two-point conversion play starting with the fifth overtime. So you've seen these games, Coach, I think, what did we play yeah, Alabama? That last a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think what was we played Alabama State yeah. was a six overtime. Yeah, Six games overtime. Yeah, so they're, 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 they're trying to shorten that up a little bit as well. All right, we'll take a break here. It's time to talk with USM and the Golden Eagles. We'll get to that coming up. Anyone has any questions from the studio audience? We'll get to that. We have text and tweets. We'll get to that. And we'll talk about USM, the Golden Eagles, at Roberts Stadium, a 6 o'clock kickoff. We'll take a break. We'll be right back after this one-minute timeout from the old country store here in Mormon. We'll talk about USM after this one minute timeout here on the Brave Sports Network. Right now we're looking pretty clean on Andrews and hopefully everybody will be back this week. And so uh, we're excited about it. And uh, she's done a great job of getting those guys in and out of that treatment room. I always tell them, I kind of scare them a little bit, Charles, when they go to that treatment room. I tell them it's contagious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you start going in there, you want to keep containing going in there. So that may keep some of them out. But, uh, but this is the thing I always tell them when I walk in there and see them, I just tell this place contagious, you know. Maybe some of them just stop going in there. But she done a great job of getting these guys back to the playing circuit. All right, so let's talk a little bit about USM coach, Robert Stadium, 6 o'clock kickoff. The USM team won enough games last year to be bowl eligible, but they they were not uh, in a bowl game last year. And, of course, we know where their head coach is, Jay Hobson, who, who was the head coach here. Uh, that Hattiesburg and his team offensively, let's start there. They have a quarterback who led the nation in completion percentage last year. And Jake Abraham, he will start on Saturday. 71%, he completed 71% of his passes last year. What does that tell you? When you see that number, what, what does that tell you in terms of the type of offense that they run and what he does? A lot of times you, you, you completed 7% of your offensive passes. It's not very long passes. The intermediate passes, they hit you from bubble screens and things of that nature. Getting the ball into some guy's hand that they really know what to do with it. Uh, but he's more of a pocket passer. Uh, that's playing into our hands, uh, of course, you know, but uh, he's one of those quarterbacks that's going to try to complete every pass. So you have Jake, Jack Abraham, the senior. Um, some news coming out of one of their top players wide receiver Perez Watkins uh, was ruled out of the first two games. This was reported uh, via the Sun Herald by Patrick McGee who covers USM. So of course we were gonna have to deal with them and who knows things might change in the next four or five days, but Watkins clearly is gonna be a guy we'd have to deal with. Oh, he's one of those guys that's off his corner like to build the offense around uh, with pass, running, jet sweeps, and 
bubble screens, and, and he can really float. He does a lot of return stuff too as well. Uh, that guy can really fly. So, um, you know, I don't know if he's gonna play or not, Charles. We, we're anticipating the plan, so that's what we're gonna approach it. Uh, anticipating the plan, but if it don't, then it'll be okay too. So in the backfield, you have Mosley as well as Steven Anderson. Talk about their running game, because last year that was kind of an issue for USL. And I think that's one of the things that Buster Faulkner is going to bring into uh, this offense is the running game. Uh, they got a big bruiser back too now, Charles. He's, he's a big old boy. Uh, he runs very hard, and I think that's one of the things that, that we're going to have to face um, uh, this, this coming Saturday, uh, that running game too as well. And I don't know right now whether they're going to be aerated or, or feature more on what they used to do at Arkansas State. And if they do some of the stuff that we did at Arkansas State, that's what we do. Uh, so our defense see it every day. Uh, but the air raid stuff is, is, is stuff Jackson State ran. So uh, we're pretty much familiar with that. So it just depends on the coach start to get there and get his feeling on how what they're going to be doing. And we'll make adjustments. Offensively, USF has 10 of the 11 players returning from last year. You talked about Buster Faulkner, the first year offensive coordinator at USM. He was at Arkansas State in his last year there. His team averaged 26 points per game. All right, let's look at USM defensively because they call them the Nasty Bunch. And they were ranked third nationally in defense last year. Why are they so nasty? Well, they got three guys up front, Charles, that there's really going to be a be, 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 can cause problems uh, if we let them. You know, those three guys up front, they feel they're a three front guy, a three three stack team. and. Uh, Get the linebackers in space, and when you when you plan a three-three stack, you got to have three good guys up front that can really get at it, and they got three good guys up front that can really get at it, and they pursue to the ball as well as we do. Special teams, coach. When you're looking at, and I say this every time we play up, that special teams. And you talked about how we have to obviously get better on punt kickoff coverage. How we've got to be able to cover kicks because it flips the field, it flips momentum. We saw that against New Mexico State. We talked about what happened last year in those games. So talk about the importance of, of trying to pin this offense back a little bit, especially on the kickoff and front cover. We have to be able to beat them with speed on kickoff. Um, you know, we have to be able to make tackles on kickoff. Uh, punt is the same way as kickoff. You know, it's a free kick almost, but they're coming at you as well to block it. So we gotta be firm up front on punt protection. Uh, I think we'll be pretty solid. And Corey got to do a good job of getting the ball off in a timely manner. Coach, how excited are you about this season? I'm very excited about this season, Charlie. When I, when I seen the kids come in on June 26, you know, I was excited. Uh, when I saw them come in, I was very excited because they came in with a good attitude. And that attitude that they came in with, they won. I got told them in the, in the team meeting, we got to go and play a perfect ball game. We can't have dumb penalties. We can't do anything crazy. We kind of play within ourselves, play within our framework, and get the job done that way. Uh, because it's going to be tough enough you know, playing in a hostile environment and, you know, and, and making mistakes is going to be one of the things that we can be able to do. Folks, we appreciate it. Let's go get them. All right, thanks, Charles. Go That'll do it for the Fred Air Radio Show. We appreciate everybody coming out here in the Old Country Store. We'll be back in studio next week. We're kind of working on a place in Vicksburg, the Mississippi Barbecue Company, downtown Vicksburg. We're, we're getting that in the pipeline in the next few weeks. We'll be up uh, up 61 North. We'll be on the air at 5.30 on Saturday. We'll hear from Brace Head Coach Fred McNair. We'll hear from Noah Johnson and Halftime Athletics Director Derek Horn. That'll do it. We appreciate everybody coming out, ladies and gentlemen. We'll talk to you next Monday night back in studio on the Fred McNair Radio Show.